If you're teaching online lessons at the moment, I want to give you 10 top tips that are quick and easy fixes that make your online lessons run so much more smoothly. The first thing you need to do for online lessons is give clear and simple instructions to your students and their parents. Make sure that you keep the tech as easy to understand for them as you can and you're going to have a much smoother lesson experience. So tell them what type of device you want them to get ready, ideally a computer or a tablet so the screen is bigger, how to position it beside the piano, uh, where they should put it and any apps that they need to download in advance. Also, make sure to tell them to test it beforehand. Don't rely on setting it up at the time. Give them an option to test it before the lesson happens so that it's much smoother once it's your lesson time and you can just get right on with the lesson content. Tip number two is even simpler, but it's also for your parents and the students. Make sure they have a piece of paper and a pencil ready to go at the piano before the lesson time. This just comes in handy for so many different things. You can use it for playing games, you can make your student write down little notes, you can use it to write messages to each other. A piece of paper and a pencil is one of the best tools to have on hand for online lessons. Tip number three is to make sure to have your student's book on hand on your end. I happen to have almost all of my students' books anyway because I order them for my students, right? So I provide the books for my students so I have a big library at my studio that I can draw from. If I don't have one of my students' books or if you don't have one of your students' books, then try to find a copy online. A lot of these things are available digitally now, so you can pull it up on the internet, Pay a few few quid for it if you need to. It's going to be invaluable to have that piece of music in front of you as your student is playing. If you can't do either of those things, get the parent to snap a photo of it before the lesson and send it through so you can pull it up on your screen. It really is so important to have that music because you're going to need to refer to bar numbers, measure numbers, and point to different things and know where your student is at all times in the piece. Tip number four is to give simple and clear directions. This is a general teaching tip. It's true in all of our teaching that we need to give clear and simple directions, but it becomes even more important in online teaching. There can be audio lag, there can be glitches and bits where your student couldn't hear you. And if you give clear and simple directions, you're going to cut through so much more of the noise. So just give your students instructions like, Play from bar 5 all the way to the end. Don't say, okay, start at bar 5, and then think, uh, should they play to the end? Should I stop them here? Give clear instructions and give it all up front so that your student can get through a chunk of what they need to do without you giving another instruction midway through. Tip number 5 is to demonstrate what you want them to do. Play more. Take advantage of the fact that you're probably sitting at a piano or a keyboard yourself and if you have an overhead piano camera, even better. But even if it's just that side-on view, use demonstration in your lessons even more than you would in person. Make sure to, as you're demonstrating, describe what you're doing as well because it's a bit harder to see online and it's going to make everything that much clearer for your student if you say, okay, now I'm starting with my fifth finger on A and my right hand first finger on B and I'm going to play bars, measures one to four so that you can see X, Y, Z and then play through it. Giving clear Indications of exactly what you're going to do before you do it helps your student hone in on exactly what they're looking at and what they're hearing on screen. Tip number six is to make your assignment sheets in advance and have the digital assignment sheet already pulled up on screen. Before my students' lessons, I sit down a few minutes before and I open up all of the assignment sheets I need for that group of students if I have a few back to back. And that way they're all open for me and I've already laid them out before the lesson happens. So during my planning, during the week, I've written down what I think we're going to get to and some notes about each assignment. And 
then during the lesson I can easily type in there, adjust things that I need to, and at the end of the lesson it's already ready to go. I don't have to spend extra time after my lessons typing up assignments that I need to send through to my parents. Tip number seven is to use your screen. Make use of the fact that you're in an online lesson and share your screen with your student to show them videos, to play audio for them, to show them flashcards on the screen and to play games. You can also open something like MuseScore, the free notation software, and use it to notate stuff that you want your student to play or explain different concepts using the staff. It's a very handy tool. If you're not sure how to screen share, you can find a video right here to show you how to do that. We'll link to it below. Tip number eight is to keep the fun going. Your online lessons should not be boring. Neither should your in-person lessons, and I doubt they are. But online, it can be easy to just get a bit dry and dull and clinical with these clear directions and all of these things we need to do and the tech involved. Make sure to keep things fun and light. Use games. Get, still get your student to improvise. We have tips right here to help you do that. Again, we'll leave links below. Tip number nine is to have a few backup activities up your sleeve for when things aren't quite going right. We use this in person, but it's even more important again online. So have a few simple improv prompts or game ideas or backup oral listening activities, that kind of thing. Have a few things in front of you that you can go, my student is not catching on to this or they're not able to concentrate on this activity right now. They're having trouble focusing with the background noises going on and siblings running in and out. This is a quick and easy thing that I can do to capture their attention and make things more fun. The last one, tip number 10, is to have a backup plan for the tech. So if Skype doesn't work, if Zoom doesn't work, if your student can't connect, what are you going to do? For me, I'm going to record a video lesson. So that's my backup plan. It's a great one to have on hand. If the tech is failing, I simply cut that. I email the parents straight away and I say, listen, tech's not playing nicely with us today. I'm going to use the rest of the lesson time to record a video for Susie and I'm going to send it through to you once it's uploaded so that she still has stuff to practice during the week and still has the advice she needs. Those are my top 10 tips for online lessons. I hope they were helpful for you. If you have any more questions about online teaching, leave them in the comments below.